Hey, what's up guys? JC here, and I am continuing with the uh, how to replace a processor on your flight controller. This is part two. In the last video, I showed you how to remove a processor from a different flight controller, probably a, one that has something else that's damaged, maybe a voltage regulator, diode, um, your USB connector is broken off, anything like that, and put it onto another flight controller that only needs a processor. Uh, like I said in that video, that's going to be the easiest way because you are reusing a processor and it already has flashed onto it what you need for it to work. Where if you buy a new processor and put it on, it's not going to work right away because you can't just plug in your USB cable, flash firmware, and uh, all that. It's, so that's what we're going to cover in this video. If you didn't watch the last one, look in the description below. I'll have a link to the last video where I show you how to actually remove a processor and put a new one on. I'm not covering that again in this video. I'm also going to leave you links to other parts, products, and uh, websites, downloads, things like that. So just look in the description, you'll find everything you need. Also want to go ahead and say that this video is going to be very long, but this is actually a very simple thing to do. It's only so long because I'm going to break it down to be as easy to follow as possible to where anybody can do this. So this is the flag and chore we used in the last video where I borrowed a processor from another board and put it on. We flashed firmware and got it working. Works great. This one, I have a brand new processor on it. The first thing we need is a tool to flash what we need to flash onto this. In the past, guys have been using these. Um, these are a little overkill. And not only that, but they're kind of expensive. You can get them between $15 to $40 depending on where you buy it from. But technology has come a long way since then. So now we can just use this. This is called the ST-Link V2. And if you search for that, then you could find something that looks like this, which technically is the same thing, but it, it has a lot more pins, a lot more functions. But that's also overkill. We don't need that. Um, or you could find something like this. Once again, same thing, but we don't need it. This is the one that I will be using in this video. Like I said, I'm going to leave you a link to this one as well as some on other websites. We also need uh, the program and software to be able to flash this. So instead of searching for this, I'm going to leave you the link to here in the description as well. Uh, this is the STSW link 004. If you scroll down, you don't need to download any of these PDFs. This is just, I guess, extra information. The only thing you really need is to come down here and click get software. Once you download it, then you have to unpack it and install it onto your computer. And uh, if you do decide to make a desktop icon, it looks something like this. As far as buying a new processor, um, there's actually websites that just sell electronic parts, but I buy all of my stuff off of eBay uh, because these other websites, they usually, the prices are cheaper, but shipping costs more. So if you need a F1 processor, don't search for F1 processor. You need to search for STM32 F103. If it's a F3 processor, then it's going to be F303. And if it's a F4 processor, it's going to be F405. And of course, because you're searching for this term, uh, you will come across a bunch of flight controllers, a bunch of tools, stuff like that. So just keep scanning through here until you find one. Or like I said, you can use other websites. It's up to you. The other thing I need to mention, and something else you may want to have, are the uh, data sheets. For these processors, you can just search for, uh, say, STM F303 datasheet, or same thing for the F4 processors, and it will take you to these websites, um, or this website with the datasheet. Like I was saying, not only is it good to have this, but also the point of me showing you this is the processor, say the F4 processors, processor that you want, has 16 pins per side, but they also make other processors, it's the same processor, just more pins. For example, this one has 25 pins per side, this one has 36, and this one has 44. And then for the F3 and F1 processors, what you want is one with 12 pins per side, because they also have one with 16 and another with 25. So make sure you are getting the right processor with the correct number of pins. And speaking of this, I'm going to leave you with another video that I made showing you how to remap your processor to uh, certain pins because sometimes uh, there's errors in the firmware in Betaflight and, uh, and they don't catch it or there's a hardware problem or maybe you have a bad pin and 
it's a really important pin, so you can actually remap something. You can get rid of something else and remap it to that pin, and uh, that's another fix for your damaged pins and traces. So that's a good video to watch. Uh, just check it out. Now let's understand how to actually use this tool. So this side right here, we will completely ignore. We are only looking at this side. You'll see SWCLK, which is going to be your clock, then SWDIO, which is your inputs and outputs, ground, 3.3 volts, and 5 volts. And uh, you can pick and choose if you want 3.3 or 5. Don't use both at the same time. Um, I'll talk more about that right now, actually. Whenever you purchase this, it's probably going to come with these servo cables uh, like this. It's just single servo wires, and I cut the other ends off, and I just solder these right to my flight controller. So for the ground from the ST-Link, really, you can place this on any ground. It doesn't matter. They're all connected together. So any ground pin you want. Um, I, sorry, wrong flight controller. I'm getting them mixed up now. Uh, or there's sometimes there's really tiny pads. Uh, so I've got a ground pad right here. You could use that, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Use any ground. Then I'll actually recommend using 3.3 volts instead of the 5 volts. You can place the 5 volt wire on your 5 volt pins, your you know your main pins, and then uh, the thing is. The processor actually operates off of 3.3 volts. I know these flight controllers are being powered with 5 volts, but there's actually a 3.3 volt voltage regulator on every single flight controller, and that is what's powering the processor because the processor isn't going to handle 5 volts. So what you want to do is find a 3.3 volt pin, and there, there's always one on all flight controllers. It's somewhere, even if it's uh, you have this Spectrum satellite receiver connector port. One of these pins is 3.3 volts. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, you know, you could just power it up and check with a multimeter. So there's one on every board. So now we've got ground and power figured out. Now for clock and inputs outputs. This can be written many different ways. Uh, clock could be CLK. It could also be SWC or SWCLK. So if I look on this board, I see right here where I have SWC. So that's just one of the three or four different ways of writing it. Then for the inputs and outputs, this could be written I-O or I-O or SWD or SWDIO. And on this one, I see SWD right here. Just give you another example. Here we have a dodo. Uh, like I said, ground goes anywhere. 3.3 volts, I see one right here, which by the way, uh, on some boards it says 3V. It doesn't actually mean 3 volts, they just shortened it. it they're all 3.3 volts. It could also be written 3V3, and the V is in place of the decimal spot. So right here it says 3V3, this tells me it's 3.3 volt. Uh, it's a pin for that. Then if we look on the back side, we see U2TX, which is UART number two transmit, but it also has a dash and SWCLK. So this is my clock pin. And then we have SWDIO, which is my inputs and outputs pin. So it's pretty simple to find. It's just they use a lot of different ways of writing it. So now I will go ahead and solder my wires on and be right back. Okay, I've got my wires soldered on. Uh, we've got ground, power, inputs and outputs, and clock. Like I said, we we're ignoring this side, and this side is actually referring to not the first row of pins, but the back row of pins. So you should have your uh, connectors plugged in like this on the back row of pins. We've got 3.3 volts, ground, uh, inputs, outputs, and clock. The 5 volt pin is not being used. Like I said, you can use it and place it on a 5 volt pin on your flight controller, but I like using 3.3 volts just to be safe. And then if you take this, Ta-da, it's a USB connector. So you guys won't be able to see my LED lights to see what's going on, but I'll tell you what they're doing. So now we need to grab firmware. You can just do a search for, uh, here I'll just show you, like Betaflight hex file or Betaflight firmware, and you should come to a website like this. This is the newest version of firmware at the time you're recording this. Come down, find uh, find your flight controller and download the hex file for it. Um, I'm using the 
Airbot F4, so I would click this. I have created a folder just for my firmware. You don't have to do this, just download it somewhere where you won't forget where it's at. And I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do it again, but you would just hit save. Then if we, the next thing we want to do is open up the SDM link utility. You want to try to connect. So if I go to target and connect, it may or may not connect. So mine did, but if yours is not connecting, then uh, you may have to enter the bootloader. On some flight controllers, you don't have to be in the bootloader. Some you do. So if, if it doesn't connect, then either jump those pins and then plug in the SE Link V2 into your computer and uh, or hold the button down, whatever you have to do to get into the bootloader and plug it in. And then try connecting again. Then after it connects, you want to click this, find the hex file, click that, and here it is. Then we will do target, program and verify. You may be getting a warning message if you do enter the bootloader mode and just click OK and then you're gonna get some type of warning message here and just click OK again. So I'm not gonna change anything here, make your screen look just like this and then click start. And right now I am getting a another blinking LED. So like I said, now that we have firmware flashed onto it, it has that blink sketch and uh, once that status LED starts blinking, you can close this out, unplug the tool, we'll unplug this, I'm going to leave these soldered on, I mean just for now at least, with them not connected to anything it's not going to hurt anything, let's plug in a USB, I'm going getting my solid green light which is my power light, blinking blue light which is my status light, my computer also made that doo 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 sound. <laughs> I feel stupid saying that. Now let's go into Betaflight. We don't have to flash firmware because that's exactly what we just did. So make sure you're on the right COM port, click connect, and here we go. I'm turning my flight controller around. If your multiplier seems to be turning really slow, uh, that's just the accelerometer. So calibrate accelerometer. Nope, didn't work. Let's try it again. There we go. Now it's moving at the same rate that I'm moving the flight controller. And that's it. You're now done. So I hope this video helped you guys out. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if, if this did help you out. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.